The fifth and final uh, learning objective for session 10 are some special cases under which we look at discounted cash flow analysis. How can we use these tools uh, if we uh, are in the road building business or if we're installing a piece of equipment that will cut costs or if we're installing two different pieces of equipment that have different lives and different maintenance costs and so on but perform the same function. Uh, so we'll go over these three real quickly. So when I'm evaluating cost-cutting proposals, I install a piece of equipment that will cut costs. I still do the same type of analysis, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and calculate OCF. I don't vary for any of these uh, projects. So if I install a piece of equipment that's, uh, let's say, a $200,000 piece of computer equipment, inventory management that's going to manage my inventory more effectively, I still want to do uh, this analysis where I will do an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow, even though the sales will be zero in this case. Uh, here's an example to buy or not to buy. $200,000 piece of equipment that will manage our inventory better, depreciate straight line to zero, four-year life, uh, worth $30,000 at the end of the uh, four-year period. So I can sell it for, if it's fully depreciated to zero, I can sell it and I'll have to pay tax on the gain. System will save us $60,000 before taxes each year because it's managing inventory more carefully and effectively. Tax rate of 39% and uh, will cost $45,000 in networking capital to start this project. What's the MPV at 16% and what's the uh, internal rate of return on this investment? So what do I do? Same thing we've always done, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. Sales are zero, costs are $60,000, depreciation, uh, straight line to zero is $50,000, so I get it. Uh, and again, watch your sign because costs are negative. So I'm reducing costs, so it's minus and minus on the cost line. And I take minus and minus 60, uh, minus 50, and I get an EBIT of $10,000. Uh, taxes in this case at 39% will be $3,900, and I'll have a resulting MPAT of $6,100. I can quickly do an OCF uh, bottom up because there's no interest expense, and it looks like the uh, bottom up. Um, Cash flow OCF will be uh, $56,100 each year. Again, that will come in for four years. Uh, after-tax salvage value, again, I, I want after-tax cash flow. So that $30,000 gain I'm going to make by selling this computer equipment, I have to pay $11,700 in taxes at, at the 39% tax rate on this one. So that will reduce my cash flow. And... Um, uh, $30,000 minus the $11,700 will give me an after-tax salvage value of $18,300. That will be a positive cash flow in year four. So I'm not going to get the $30,000 and I'm going to get $11,700 less because of taxes. I'll get $18,300 goes in as my cash flow in year number four. So I lay this out again, OCF minus NCS minus CNWC to calculate the overall cash flow from assets. So uh, this uh, piece of equipment costs 200000 uh, today, but I will save $45,000 in networking capital due to more efficient inventory management. So my net cash outflow in uh, time zero is negative 155000 For that, I'll get 56-1, 56-1, 56-1, 56-1 in each year in uh, operating cash flow. Uh, in the fourth year, I have to turn that sign around and change my networking capital to a negative 45000 and uh, the after-tax cash flow on the uh, sale of the equipment in year four, I'll get 18300 in. And so I calculate my uh, cash inflows. I compare them and discount them uh, after discounting them to the cash outflow of negative 155000 And my MPV at uh, 16% is negative 12768 So I'm going to reject this project on that basis at that, uh, at that hurdle rate uh, of 16%. Um, so after some trial and error, um, we have an IRR of about 11.5%. So this one is nowhere near the hurdle rate of the company, so the CFO will reject this one. Uh, case number two, special case number two, is when I have a bid price. I'm setting a bid price. Let's say you are a local road builder um, and you have to submit competitive bids for a stretch of highway. It's very important to your business. A lot of times the winner is the one who submits the lowest bid, but you may get into the bidder's curse where you just keep bidding so low and so low and so low on every bid where you run yourself right out of business. So again, how should I evaluate this project? I should do the same thing. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow on any new project or any new startup um, and avoid that bidder's curse. The final uh, special project you're going to use are uh, projects where you might have similar functions needed with different costs of the uh, project. 
Uh, one may be more expensive, but it has less maintenance cost per year. Um, and in this case, in this case, we must calculate the equivalent annual cost of these. And we have an example in here uh, of a filtration system that a chemical manufacturer might buy or a precipitation system. Both have the same function, but two different methods of pollution control. One costs 1.1 million, the other one costs 1.9 million um, to install, buy and install. $60,000 a year for the filtration system and replace it every five years, so that only has a five-year useful life, whereas the precip system will cost only 10000 but it's more expensive, but only 10000 a year to operate and will last eight years. So these have differing lives and different maintenance costs. Uh, which one is better at a 12% discount rate? Tax rate of your company is 34%. So what do I do in this case with the filtration system or the precipitation system? I can't pay for both of them. I can only do one or the other. I need to calculate the equivalent annual cost. How do you do that? Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. Sales in both cases are zero, minus the cost to operate. And then I subtract depreciation on both of these straight line over the useful life, whether it be five years or eight years and create an income statement, a balance sheet, and cash flow, and then uh, calculate the OCF. Uh, after I calculate the OCF, I look at an annuity factor, and um, I calculate total present value of the cost, and then I calculate the equivalent annual cost. So the filtration system um, is equal to a negative uh, 973,000 is equal to some EAC each year times the uh, present value annuity factor of 3.6048. So the equivalent annual cost of the filtration system is 269 to almost 270,000. Precipitation system, I take the same thing. I take the uh, MPV, and that's equal to some equivalent annual cost times the annuity factor, differing annuity factor, and I get an EAC of negative $308,000. And I look at, on an equivalent annual basis, which of these two systems is better, and we find that the filtration system is uh, the cheaper of the two on an equivalent annual basis when we're comparing apples to apples, taking into account the uh, differing useful lives and the different maintenance cost of each. In summary, then, in session 10, we've had five learning objectives. At this point, you should be able to, uh, you should know which cash flows get included in these major capital investment analyses. We want incremental after tax cash flows, including things like uh, erosion in there, an opportunity cost, and excluding sunk cost. Um, learning objective number two tells us, focus on the incremental cash flows and how to calculate cash flow. OCF equals EBIT plus D minus T, and then I, on a larger scale, I want to look at uh, cash flow from assets. OCF minus NCS minus CNWC. And in learning objective three, we talked about the importance of developing three financial statements on all every project you'll undertake for the rest of your life. Income statement first, balance sheet second, cash flow third. And from that, do all the analyses that we looked at in, chat, in uh, session number nine, which was MPV, IRR, uh, AAR, payback, discounted payback, and profitability index. And use all of those techniques on these cash flows to evaluate these major investment uh, capital investment projects. We looked at, uh, in learning objective four, four total um, definitions of operating cash flow. The safest one, uh, which you can always use, is traditional approach, OCF equals EBIT plus D minus T, and three other approaches that you can use if there's no interest expense in the income statement. And finally, three special cases of discounted cash flow analyses where you can use these uh, methods on things that don't traditionally have sales and, you know, a balance sheet and so on. We still want to do the same process, though, on even, even on these special cases of uh, equipment with differing lives or uh, cost savings uh, type projects. Still want to do income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and then uh, apply the techniques we used in session number nine on those cash flows. Hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, discussion on project cash flows and relevant cash flows.